Next slide. How do we format data in spreadsheets for effective data use? The most common mistake made is treating spreadsheets programs like lab notebooks, that is relying on context, notes in the margin, spatial layout of data, and fields to convey information. As humans, we can interpret these, but the computer don't view information the same way, and unless we explain to the computer what every single thing means, it will not be able to see how our data fits together. And so using the power of computers, we can manage and analyze data in much more effective and faster ways. But to use that power, we have to set up our data for the computer to be able to understand it. And therefore, we should never modify our raw data. We always need to make a copy and have a backup before making any other changes. Next slide. When working with spreadsheets during data cleanup or analysis, it's very easy to end up with a spreadsheet that looks very different from the one you started with. In order to be able to reproduce your analyses or figure out what you did, when reviewer 3, for instance, asks for different analysis, you should create a, a new file with your cleaned or analyzed data. Don't modify the original data set or you will never know where you started. You also need to keep track of the steps you took in your cleanup or analysis. You should track these steps as you would any step in an experiment. We recommend that you do this in a plain text file stored in the same folder as a data file. And this is an example of a spreadsheet setup. Next slide, structuring data in spreadsheets. So the cardinal rule of using spreadsheets programs for data is to keep it tidy. Put all your variables in columns, the thing you're measuring like weight or temperature. Put each observation in its own row. Don't combine multiple pieces of information in one cell. Leave the raw data raw. Do not change it. Export the clean data to a text-based format like CSV, which is comma-separated values. This ensures that anyone can use the data and is required by most data repositories. For instance, we have the data from a survey of small mammals in a desert ecosystem. Different people have gone to the field and entered data into, the, into a spreadsheet. They keep track of things like species, plot, weight, sex, and date collected. And if they were to keep track of data like this, as seen on the table, the problem is that the species and sex are in the same field. So if they wanted to look at all of the species, or look at different weight di distributions by sex, it would be hard to do this using this data setup. If instead we put sex and species in different columns, you can see that it will be much easier to work with. Next slide. As you can see on this um, table, that the species and sex are in two different columns and it's therefore much easier to understand or even work with this um, sort of um, table. Um, so, the rule of thumb when setting up a data sheet is columns equals variables and rows equals observations, cells equals data. And this is how it should look like as seen on this table. And the data set used in this lesson are, this, it's actually a real data set and they are observations of a small mammal community in southern Arizona. This is a this is part of a project studying the effects of rodents and ants on the plant community that has been running for almost 40 years. The rodents are sampled on a series of 24 plots with different experimental manipulations 
controlling which rodents are allowed to access which plots. Next slide. So there's an exercise for this part of the lesson and we're going to take a messy version of the survey data and describe how we could clean it up. You can open up the data in a spreadsheets program and you can see that there are two tabs. And so two field assistants conducted the surveys, one in 2013 and one in 2014, and they both kept track of the data in their own ways in, in tab 13 and tab 14 of the data set respectively. Now you're the person in charge of this project and you want to be able to start analyzing the data. Can you identify what is wrong with this spreadsheet? And secondly, can you also try to figure out the steps you would need to take to clean up the 2013 and 2014 tabs and to put them all together in one spreadsheet? We will be looking at um, ways on how to figure this out in the next section, but I would like for you to actually just take a few minutes um, to work on this exercise on your own before we move on to the next session, to the next section, which is dates as data. Next slide. 